may I please read to everyone our house rules for today. House rules, please mute your mics at all times. Click raise hand icon, unmute yourself should you have any questions during the Q&A forum. Please change your name display with this format. School underscore first name, comma, surname. For example, if you are from Atmajaya University, you would write AJU underscore Red Atienza. If you are from Miriam College, it will be MC underscore Red Atienza. For your information, this event will be recorded. Should you have any concerns regarding this, kindly email and Sibaya staff. Please open your videos for our photo opportunities as instructed. So as mentioned, may I request everyone's video to be turned on and let us have our first photo opportunity with each other. Hello, everyone. Giselle, you can take the photo now. Hello, so smile. Um, one, two, three. Next. Okay, open your cameras. Smile. One, two, three. All right, done. Thank you. Thank All you. right, thank you so much, Miss Chriselle. May we have the slides? Thank you. Next slide, please. So thank you for that, Ms. Grissel. May we all be in the presence of the Holy Lord and let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day that you have given to us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to collaborate with our partner school at Majaya University, despite the challenges around us. May you provide each and every Everyone with knowledge and wisdom as we continuously learn from each other and apply our learnings to our everyday lives. We hope for your guidance and good health for everyone. In this we pray, amen. Miriam of Nazareth, teacher, teach your ways and lead us to Jesus. As we formally start, I would like to introduce to you our open re opening remarks speaker, who is also our chairperson for the Department of Business Administration and our coordinator for the graduate program of the School of Business, Entrepreneurship and Accountancy, Ms. Mildred Sevilla. Thank you, Eunice. Good afternoon, Dr. Eko Widodo and Dr. Agung of Atmajaya Catholic University of Indonesia and their students. Dr. Ruby Alminar Mucha and our Miriam College students. This is the first time that we are doing a collaborative online international learning or COIL between our longtime partner school. And it's just like rekindling all relate, old relationships and partnership. It will provide our, both our students with an opportunity to interact, engage, and collaborate with peers from the other school to be able to develop intercultural competencies while working together on a specific task or activities. Starting this COIL program to discuss consumer behavior and behavioral marketing is, I think, the perfect course to jumpstart. It will make our students gain insights into social cultural differences of our two markets. Furthermore, it will provide an invaluable opportunity to enhance students' ability to understand and respond to diverse opinions, beliefs, and values that might be different from their own. We look forward to more COIL activities between our school in the future and a visit to each other's countries soon. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Okay, for our first lecturer, uh, we will start off right away. Um, our first lecturer is Dr. Ruby Alminar Mucha, and um, she is the current academic dean of the School of, of Business, Entrepreneurship, and Accountancy. Dr. Ruby, thank you.
I think my internet my internet connection is lagging. Am I coming good? Yes, Dr. Ruby. Probably you can uh, turn off your camera while um, doing the lecture. Okay. So thank you. Well. Thank you for that, Ms. Mildred. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so let me just acknowledge the presence of our administrators from our partner school, Dr. Uh, Agung, Dr. Eko, the faculty members from Atmajaya University, and of course, the administrators from Miriam College. So we have Ms. Mildred Sevilla, the chairperson of our business administration department, and uh, our coordinator for the MBA program. So the partnership with Atmajaya University of Indonesia and Miriam College Philippines had been active since 2018. So let me request for the next slide, please. So this is just a transition period where we would like to uh, move forward to having our uh, new normal collaboration where we used to visit, of course, at Majaya before the pandemic. And uh, Miriam College also is expecting that Atmajaya will be visiting us here in Manila. So welcome to the two areas to collaborate. So the other slide, please, Lizelle, the first one. So welcome to the two areas to collaborate. So these are the areas on behavioral marketing for Miriam College Philippines and consumer marketing from Atmajaya University of Indonesia. So for this COIL program, we aim to attain the following learning objectives. So each participant is encouraged to appreciate and recognize the Filipino and the Indonesian consumer behavior. And of course, after appreciating and recognizing how these uh, two markets behave in terms of cross-cultural fit, we will have to look into the design that will best uh, fit the, the behavioral marketing plan for the Filipino and the Indonesian market. So let's, uh, let me move forward to my topic. So first is an introduction on the two common. We are collaborating on Dr. Ruby, you're logging to areas behavioral mark okay uh, uh, is this better miss mildred yes yes dr ruby okay so let me start with the introduction of my talk so commonly we encounter these two terms behavioral marketing and consumer behavior so perhaps most of you as participants right now were able to take few or more units of your consumer behavior during your undergraduate years and still taking this up under your master or masteral program so let's differentiate so when we talk of the behavioral marketing this will enable the marketers specifically the executives or the marketing organizations to increase the effectiveness of campaigns by understanding the customer activity, the psychology of the consumers, how they feel, how they think, and how they decide in terms of the buying attitude. So this will also include the external forces like uh, the, the influence of the society, the economy, the cultural factors, which may affect their decision-making attitude. On the other end, when we say consumer behavior, we are just looking into concepts and principles. And then after collecting all these concepts and principles, we make use of them as our references in making our marketing decision. So as you are enrolled on any of these two courses, any of these two courses aim to enhance your competencies to be globally fit as entrepreneurs, business owners, future team leaders, supervisors, or executives. So on this note, uh, let's also differentiate what is a marketing program against a marketing plan so that we will know what will be the end product of the talk. So when we talk of marketing programs, this is inclusive of all the four P's of the marketing mix. So the product, the price, promotion, place, 
physical evidences, process, and people. Whereas if we talk about the marketing plan, uh, am I still coming good? Yes, Dr. Ruby. Okay, but when we talk of marketing plan, this is very specific to We lost you, Dr. Ruby. One or two piece in the third Dr. Ruby. And focus. So on this slide, you can see that we would like to look let me just check. Dr. Ruby, are you still there? Hello? Okay, okay, you're back. You're back. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the problem. <laughs> Sorry, where did I ano, lost uh, my on the, on the marketing plan and marketing program? Are okay. you still on the on the first slide, Dr. B? Or shall Sorry, I was trying to differentiate the two terms, the consumer yes. behavior and the, the behavioral marketing. And after that, I was trying to differentiate also yes. a marketing program from a marketing plan. Is this yes. okay, Ms. Mildred? Yes, you're, you're in the marketing program and marketing plan. Okay, <laughs> and thank you. Okay, so as I was saying, when we talk of marketing program, this is inclusive of all the piece in the marketing mix. So you prepare a program covering the product, price, promotion, place, process, and everything. But when you design a marketing plan, you are focusing on a specific strategy. This is centered and focused on one or two elements of the marketing mix. So therefore, what I am trying to emphasize here is that my behavioral marketing students are tasked to design a very comprehensive behavioral marketing plan not a very macro behavioral marketing program. So on this note, when you look at the, the, this slide, we are looking at the mindset of our consumers, data mining, fit to need, the recallability of a brand for marketing metrics analysis so that we can have the best return on investment and increase in profit margins. So our behavioral marketing plan aims to identify the best marketing metrics to measure how we can design a product or a service that will fit the need of our Filipino and Indonesian market. So next slide, please. Okay, so let me introduce you to the Filipino consumers, okay? So our Indonesian participants, so perhaps you were able to meet Filipinas before, Filipino families, but this time let's recall how they behave in terms of their buying decisions. So let's talk about their preferences. So this was a survey conducted in 2019 looking into what are the preferences and the behavior of the Filipino consumer. So this, this research was conducted prior or before the pandemic. So we will have to, to compare this with uh, before, during, and after the, after the pandemic. So what, what were the changes on the Filipino consumers buying behavior? So it was noted on the survey that during that time, the Filipino market was a new emerging market under the middle class. So according to Peter article, when Filipinos like what they see, they buy it, but certainly during sale periods. So on this note, we can say that the Filipinos are bargain hunters. 
there can be situations where they would want the product, but they can wait until such product are placed on promotions. According to Ms. Luz, on, on her article, Filipino consumers could be understood by analyzing their product preferences for beauty, hygiene, health, and convenience. So from the survey conducted, 72% of the Filipinas admitted that they would like to improve their hair and change their complexion. So perhaps, admittedly, some of the Filipinas here will say they were able to experience several brands of shampoo and perfectly choosing the best fit brand or they were able to experience hair colors of different types or variants to make or to improve their look and they were able to experience also buying brands to whiten their white complexion so they have the white complexion, but still they would like whiter, like the Koreans or the Japanese. So on this, uh, on this research, we can say that the Filipinas prefer beauty products, hair conditioner, hand and body lotion, whitening body lotion. So what is now the implication of this particular highlights on this slide? So we are trying to say that just in case you are planning to uh, market your Indonesian product in the Philippines. So these are the primary choices of the Filipinas. So next, please. So they prefer healthier and more on the go food. So there's an increase in sales for cereal. So meaning from basic full rice meal, because they prefer healthy meals, they are now substituting their rice to cereals, yogurts, biscuits, and then from soda, they are now buying fruit, vegetable juices, energy drinks. So that's the behavior of the, that's the preference of the Filipino consumers under the third item. Filipinos prefer fast, easy, and convenient choices like they would like to buy or prefer ready to drink beverages, easy open can, quick and easy meal purchases, meaning instant noodles, canned meat, meal flavorings and seasonings. They do not want to spend so much time cutting their onions, their garlic, their ginger or other seasonings on the traditional way. And number five, they have more purchases for germ protection products like alcohol, hand sanitizers, disinfectants, personal hygiene products like panty liners, razors, sanitary pads. So this was the research conducted in 2019. Before the pandemic, Filipinos were already very concerned on their health. They were already buying so much of germ protection products. So with these preferences, let's move to the next slide, please. You can see that the Filipinos would visit Green Hills Shopping Center, Divisoria Mall, Changge. They would like to purchase food to go, preferably getting orders for uh, takeout from the fast food chain segment. They are into buying for their preferred brand of disinfectants, sanitizers, shampoo, and other personal hygiene brands. Okay, let's move to the next slide. So let's look into the second aspect of the Filipino consumer market on their behavior. Because when we talk of the preferences, we said that they are bargain hunters. They prefer beauty, hygiene, and health products and buying at their convenience. So how do they behave when it comes to buying attitude? So we are aware that online shopping is the latest trend. So let's look at the research conducted by the Nielsen survey uh, in 2019 before the pandemic in terms of the Filipino buying behavior. So for the brand loyalty, For the brand loyalty, 
the research shows that uh, 63% of the Filipinos are brand loyal to shampoo. So let me just talk first on the second bulleted item. 56% are loyal to deodorant. 53% are brand to coffee. And 77% of the Filipino respondents have preferred brand. It means that to a supermarket or a convenience store, they already have the shopping list. They already have the brand to buy. Specifically, the brand for the shampoo in which they feel that their hair is compatible. The brand of uh, deodorant in which they feel that their skin is also uh, good to the brand. Or the brand of house coffee, not exactly the, the coffee shop like Starbucks. So this research is more focused on what is the house brand of their coffee. So in short, Filipinos have brand loyalty to shampoo, deodorant, and coffee. They always have a ready shopping list before going or visiting a supermarket. So let's move to the next slide. Although Filipino consumers observe brand loyalty, this is now an opposing findings. Filipinos try new products with fresh product development. So which means that they try, they experiment, Somehow, they are also risk taker in buying a new brand. Although they have the shopping list, according to the survey, 68% bought a new product during their last grocery trip. So in terms of how many, how much, what types, nothing was mentioned on the survey except 68% of these people visiting the supermarket with the grocery list will have a tendency to try a new product. So they prefer to buy new products at 78%. 77% would like new product options like new flavors, new, new size, new color, new scent, or other variations. And according to Mr. Stewart, the managing director of Nielsen in the Philippines, he noted that Filipinos are very conscious of celebrities. So they always associate themselves with the celebrity endorser. That's why there was a rise in social media posting reliance, meaning Filipinos are very uh, associative of themselves with the influencers, with the celebrities, in terms of what brand they should be choosing. So on this note, next slide, please. Aside from being a risk taker, they buy for value, meaning as much as possible, they would like to buy more product for the least cost. So they consider the value for money because they are promotions driven. They are always after the free gift offers that they will see for the different brands and the very attractive buy one, take one promo, which always, uh, uh, which always hits the consumer market. So despite having a prepared list for the shopping trips, majority buy more than what they have planned due to promotions like price off, discounts, coupons, buy one, take one. So perhaps some of you are uh, really admitting that you are influenced by in-store promo, thus affecting somehow your list and your budget when you are visiting the store. Okay, so let's move forward. So after determining what are the preferences, what are the behavior of the Filipino consumers, let's look into what major components affect their 
decision. So when we talk of the major components, these are the, uh, this can be the visible, non-visible, this can be something like rational or sometimes uh, irrational reasons or factors that will influence why they buy. First is the beliefs. So when you uh, try to, to, to uh, look into the consumer behavior of some market or Filipinos here, they are affected by traditions, beliefs. Like for example, if you are buying a black shirt for the Filipinos, traditionally, this signifies bad luck. But of course, when you are fashion conscious on the contemporary, this may mean that a black dress is an elegant color which may fit a formal occasion. On the other end naman, Filipinos wear the polka dots fabric, especially at the eve of uh, the new year, because they find that the polka dots signify wealth, money, good luck. So on this note, there are beliefs that may impact favorably or unfavorably a brand that you are offering to the market. Second component can be the feelings. So sometimes they may feel not good. They may feel like they are no sated when they see some meat served because they are vegetarian. They may feel not good or bad. They may feel bad because they do not want to visit a particular place that reminds them of sad memories. So the feelings may also have impact on their attitude. Third is the behavioral intent. They compare price vis-a-vis -vis the quality of the product, that they are willing to spend more for luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Gucci, Rolex, because they feel that they can, they can find better quality as they spend more. And they are also aware that when they are sacrificing the value for a cheaper price, then quality is also sacrificed. So that's the factor under number three. Next is their financial ability. Although we say that Filipinos are bargain hunters, some of them are also budget conscious. They do not want to spend more than what they have. The financial ability or the financial constraints may enable them to purchase a particular product. Thus, they will be looking for a brand offering which will fit their ability. They have preference for reputable brand of quality. So, which means that they are proud of the brand. They want the brand exposed. They want the, the brand in bold, visible, can be seen front and back, even uh, wherever they go, even from a distance, the brand can be recognized. That is there. That is one component that affects their buying attitude. And then on this component, the last two items are the competing demands for resources. So if we go back to the, to the traditional hierarchy of demand, we always say that the basic needs are food, clothing, and shelter. But right now, we or every one of us perhaps find it basic that we need to have gadgets, we need to have internet access, we need to have Wi-Fi in the area. And this is where we say that there is a competition for availability of resources according to how they will classify it, whether it's still part of their basic need or just part of a want or a luxury need, which means that 
uh, some of those luxury needs, some of those ones are now being converted into basic needs. And of course, the social influence, the family, the peer, the society, the reference group affects their decision for a choice of a brand. Like for example, the family may have a house brand when it comes to basic commodities like what is the basic seasoning brand? What is the cooking oil brand? What is the detergent bar brand? What is the shampoo which is compatible to all members of the family? So which means that the family can be one strong influencer in the choice of their brand, thus affecting the buying attitude. So let me move forward. So our uh, questions, clarifications on this, uh, this, on this presentation will be entertained later. So I was able to present the Filipino preferences, their behavior, the major components affecting their buying attitude. So let's look into the pandemic time. So in 2021, Nielsen conducted another survey identifying what Filipino consumers' buying behavior has changed during the pandemic. Thus, as future marketing executives or as executives right now, this will be your guide in designing the behavioral marketing program that will fit the market. First one is, according to the survey, there was an increase, of course, everyone knows this. There was an increase in the use of e-commerce. Of course, the younger segment are the more uh, technology savvy. They are more techy, more adept to using apps, on e-commerce, but the seniors or the older generations, they have to cope. So they have to learn. They have to adapt to the e-commerce online shopping and buying so that they can, they can also be, uh, if they can also uh, purchase whatever are the needs that they have during the pandemic. So during the pandemic time, the middle age are the primary group making the most number and most valuable online purchases because the seniors are more controlled in terms of what to buy online. There was also a high growth in the number of traditional trade outlets. So in the Philippines, we call it the Sari Sari store. Because of the rise in the alert levels, the lockdowns, the mobility control among the people, the social distancing, the limited face-to-face. -face. So small stores in the neighborhood, even the ready-to-cook meals, sellers, rise in terms of their number or volume to satisfy the needs of the people in the community. So according to the survey, these are the top two things that increase or that change during the pandemic. The type of buying outlet using e-commerce, the type of buying outlet or channel of distribution using the traditional trade. So let's move forward in terms of whether these changes will still be present in 2022. Because this was in 2021. Let's look at the current year now. So what pre-pandemic behavior will likely return in 2022? So first, there can be a reset on three things, basket reset, homebody reset, 
and the rational reset. So when we say basket reset, Filipinos will go back to the usual channel of distribution where they do bulk buying every payday, every weekend. This is the supermarket visit. And with this, families will again enjoy visiting the outlets, dining out after, after their grocery time, bonding with the family combined with entertainment. So on this note, if you will be designing your behavioral marketing plan, you have to look forward to the possibility that there will be an increase in on-site purchases for the market. And that is the basket reset. Although online buying will still be there, but physical visit to outlets will rise. Two is the home body reset. Because during the pandemic, families stay home. Even on occasions, they celebrate among themselves. But this time, they are ready to hang out. They are ready to meet friends and socialize. They are into consuming their meals or favorite meals on premise together with their beverages, coffee, and snacks. So there will be a rise in the demand for uh, food chain, restaurants, dining places, uh, food and beverages brands. There will be a rational reset because we are now on the stage where we go back to from work from home, we are now required to report to offices work on site. For example, there are offices requiring us to work on selected days. So slowly we are moving to two days a week, three days a week, and soon it will be the whole week of uh, the, the whole working days of the week that we will be required to be on site. And with this, there will be a rational reset that they will feel that there is a need to buy a new set of clothes. There is a need for them to upgrade fashion. And there is a reason that they need to buy new items or personal items for them to satisfy their need on improving their physical appearances. So looking at these items, what will likely return in 2022 will already give us a vision that there will be a rise in the demand for supermarket retailing, food and beverage, dining and entertainment, fashion and personal care, wellness items. So this will likely return in 2022 whether we are into what they say new normal, real normal, almost nearing the post-pandemic, or almost recovering from the pandemic season. Okay? So with these things that will likely return, what has changed the behavior, let's look into what will really stay in the consumer behavior. Next slide, please. Okay. What will stay? So if you were able to look at what will, uh, what will uh, return in 2022, the reset on, uh, what do you call it? The, the reset for basket, the home body reset, the rational reset. Let's look at what will really stay in 2022. So the e-commerce will still increase, but there is one modification. There will be the evolution or the introduction of what we call 
omni-channel strategy. So the Philippine Social Commerce Market Report in 2022, this was in May 12, 2022, is expecting that the growth of 30.4%, which is equivalent to $681.6 million in 2022, is a forecast increase in terms of the consumer market for the Philippines. So on this note, the speed in the e-commerce growth with the recognition of the omni-channel is one approach in designing your behavioral marketing plan. So what is this omni-channel? So it is emphasized that all channels should be consistent in delivering a brand because we know that a brand can be ordered by phone. It can be ordered through an app. It can be ordered, for example, through other social media applications or online. But sometimes you experience that when you are ordering online in a supermarket, you cannot find the size. But if you are physically visiting the supermarket, the size is available. And that defeats the omni-channel concept. Because in the omni-channel strategy, strategy, you make everything consistent and standard. Whatever you offer online in terms of price, promotion, in terms of variety, are the same items that they can see when they are visiting your store physically or when they are visiting or calling you by phone to order. So it is not just making so many apps available for the online ordering, but rather moving towards the omni-channel strategy. Another thing that will stay is the demand for the ready-to-eat meal category. So it is not just the quick meal that we order from fast food chains, but these are the ready-to-eat, which will still require few minutes of heating in the microwave. So these are some brands that you see on convenience stores like 7-Eleven, Alpha Mart, Mini Stop. So there will still be an increase in demand for this. Third, there will be continuous concern about health and wellness. So although the wearing of the face shield is not anymore uh, required, but rather optional, the wearing of the mask, the washing of the hands, the spraying of the alcohol, the use of the disinfectants and the social distancing are still being practiced. And this will continue as part of the health and wellness concern of the Filipino market. So with these three things that will stay in 2022, what will be your main reference in designing your behavioral marketing plan? So let me move to the last topic. Okay. So what should be your behavioral marketing plan if you want to go global, not just, for example, uh, in the Philippines, but in Indonesia as well, or in other countries affected by the pandemic, and perhaps uh, also recognizing the changes, the, the items that will return, the items or the factors that will stay, and now, what will be the design of our behavioral marketing plan as we move forward or onwards from 2022. So lifestyle change on uncertain future. Everyone here can say that we are really not certain about the future, particularly that we have this, we were able to experience the pandemic. But quickly and rationally and being resilient, we were able to cope and still coping in order to adapt 
to whatever will be the new lifestyle. So first, your, your behavioral marketing plan must consider convenience. Whoever is the market, they will still be looking for the process element of the marketing mix, meaning the quickest way to deliver your brand or your service. So try to look for a strategy to find the convenience in terms of the process element of the marketing mix. Two is being connected. So there will still be a factor in the strategy that will be inclusive of the digital presence of your brand. So they are available on the digital shelf through online uh, purchases or apps. There should be an e-content in terms of how you will deliver the information about the product or service that you are selling because there will still be an increase in the use of online buying or e-commerce. Third, look into the value for money. With the rise in the inflation rate, definitely people will already or will always look into buying for more for whatever amount of money is available. So they will be more sensitive for the value of money factor. And the fourth and the most interesting thing is that the baby boom impact. So remember that there were 2 million Filipino babies born at the end of 2021. So 2021, five, 10 years from now, uh, 15 years from now, they will be teens. 20 years from now, they will be young adults. They will be your next generation target market. So they are the alpha generation. Look into their psychology, the profile, the behavior that according to survey, this alpha generation attention span is maximum of eight minutes. So definitely, we are, you are not alpha generation. I've been talking for more than eight minutes. So still, I, I, I believe that you are still with me. They are not even visuals as compared to the generation Z. They are more into gamification approach, meaning if you will be discussing or teaching on this generation, they will appreciate if you teach them using games rather than just using pictures. And therefore, this may also impact your behavioral marketing plan on how you will be developing and attracting brand recall for your advertisements. Because if they are not visuals as compared to the previous generation, they are more into gamification approach in the recall process, then your promotional strategy in the behavioral marketing plan should also fit this baby boom impact. Okay? So the last slide. So the omni-channel shopping will also affect your behavioral marketing plan. Make it consistent, standard in terms of what you offer online, what they can see physically in the store, what they are ordering by phone because consumers will definitely compare and say, why is it that when I am ordering this brand of supposing uh, disinfectant on online app, they are always offering me the bigger size. Eh, my, I'm looking for supposing a smaller size. But when I visited the physical outlet, all sizes are available because there's also a tendency that you might be defeating the purpose of the omni-channel. What you are offering on online are slow-moving varieties. And that is the 
opposite of the omni-channel plan. So they will always compare and there will be a possibility that if there will be differences on your channels, one channel might be losing its share for the market preference. And the last one, there will still be, no, no, sorry, number six, there will still be a demand for antibacterial products, but take note, try to think of sustainable strategies because definitely if your brand is a brand of alcohol, a disinfectant, a, uh, what's this, uh, sanitizing uh, product, the demand will still be there but if you do not make and reconfigure strategies for a long period of time and make it sustainable, demand for your antibacterial products will definitely die out. Okay? So on this note, I was able to, to present to you the profile of the Filipino consumers in terms of their preferences in terms of their behavior, the major components of their buying attitude. So you may now uh, stop sharing. Uh, we were also able to, to identify what changed uh, during the pandemic, what will return in 2022, what will stay after 2022, and how will your behavioral marketing plan be affected with all these changes before, during, and after the pandemic? So with that, thank you so much. And I hope you were able to appreciate and recognize the Filipino consumers. And uh, you will have your guide in designing your behavioral marketing plan. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ruby. Thank you, Dr. Ruby. Thank you. It so let me now introduce, because we really have very limited time on this COIL event. So let me now introduce our lecturer two. So our lecturer two published several books in business marketing and anthology. He had written 41 journals and articles connected with international projects on research since 1999 to present. And he has a very strong organizational mm. experience on professional organizations. A research fellow of international partner schools in Germany and Portugal. From vice dean and now the dean of faculty of the business administration and communication services, so let's welcome our lecturer two for our collaborative online international learning, Dr. Eko Widodo. Okay. Dr. Eko. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ruby, for your, the opportunity. And for us of all, I say thank you uh, from Atma Jaya Catholic University of Indonesia and collaboration with the Miriam College Filipina that uh, in, the, in this afternoon, we have a good opportunity to make, to run collaborative online international learning. It's uh, the value, valuable moment for our students, also for our teacher that we can uh, doing this. It is, uh, I think it's uh, the first time, but uh, it's just beginning and we hope that we can uh, collaborate uh, again in many area uh, so we can uh, conduct conduct the collaborative online international learning again in the uh, another uh, topic uh, and also I thank you also to uh, Dr. Mildred Sevilla coordinator a graduate pro program, School of Business, Entrepreneurship, and Accountancy, Miram College, Philippines. And 
now I will uh, continue the lecture by Dr. Ruby. It's very interesting topic that Dr. Ruby uh, said, uh, discuss, uh, present about the Filipino customer behavior right now, uh, before, uh, now, and uh, after the pandemic. It's the critical moment from uh, customer behavior that uh, pandemic can change uh, our uh, behavior, especially how we we uh, spend our money, how we how we uh, pay uh, many things, and how, and what have happened in the uh, marketing now and the future. But uh, in my presentation. It's okay uh, in um, my PPT. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, in my presentation, I will uh, discuss with you about the general uh, behavioral marketing, not specific about the customer behavior in Indonesia or about uh, the the general attitude of uh, Indonesian people towards uh, marketing, but uh, I will uh, discuss about the general marketing uh, for the, from the wider uh, perspective, why behavior marketing is uh, very important now, why uh, we should con consider the behavioral marketing right now, in the, uh, after the pandemic, uh, actually. And then after uh, this lecture, uh, our student and the student from Miram College can discuss uh, what happened uh, in the future, what happened about uh, Indonesian uh, customer behavior and et cetera. And uh, this is a behavior marketing. As we know, in the 2016, uh, in the election of the President of the United States, uh, you know that uh, Hillary Clinton is lost by uh, Donald Trump, and it's a very uh, unpredictable moment because uh, before the election, uh, every polling said that. Hillary Clinton will be win this uh, election. Uh, every every poll, yeah. uh, and Donald Trump uh, will be lose in the election. But the reality is that Donald Trump become the president of United States. What happened in in this case? Why the polling is uh, wrong, when the prediction is uh, wrong, when the uh, result of the uh, election is different with the expectation of the many uh, public uh, polling in United United States. But it is because sometimes the survey is cannot be trusted. Yeah, because the the mind of the people is more complicated than that. The brain of the people is more complicated than that. So it's difficult uh, for us, for uh, the marketing expert, uh, to predict the behavior of the people. So. It's important that uh, uh, now is being human mean being quite curious about the other woman. Our instinct is always want to know what happened 
in the future. Especially, especially, we are very interested in why people. Why people do think they do? Why people buy uh, something? Why people spend money? The better we understand the its mot motivation of the customer, so we can better serve each other. The better we understand our customer, is we can serve our customer better. But again, the brain of the people is very complicated. It's not easy to predict the uh, way people uh, do uh, something. It's very bit difficult now. You know, every day we have a mixed uh, survey uh, to predict the behavior of the customer. But uh, as the Hillary uh, Clinton case uh, tell us that the prediction not always uh, accurate yeah, because again, the brain of the people is very complicated. Yeah. Ah, we know that the most basic level belief and preferences determine a great what people do. They, there are informational building blocks that shape human decision making. Many decisions that we make every day is uh, unpredictable, sometimes is irrational. Unfortunately, belief and preferences are hidden by default. Our belief uh, sometimes is hidden. Yeah. Uh, as uh, Dr. Uh, Ruby said before, that in Filipino, uh, black shirt is uh, correlated with the bad luck. Maybe it's, uh, it's uh, come from unconscious mind of us yeah. that we we predict that uh is that is bad luck yeah. because our belief and our preferences are hidden despite all the technological advance humanity hasn't even come close to inventing a device that would allow you to read anyone mind. Until now, we can read the anyone mind. We can read the customer mind. Is the big uh, problem now. To know about how people uh, behave in the future, uh, we are uh, doing a uh, survey research. Yeah. Until now, super survey research is uh, still important. But survey research only makes sense if only only if people honest, honestly report their belief and preferences. Honestly report their belief and preferences. But something some sometimes people didn't know what the the their really believe what their really preferences if the people the customer himself or themselves didn't know what they believe or preferences or what uh, what the other yeah. so it's, it's more difficult because uh, sometimes people didn't know what their belief, what their preferences. Yeah. The value of survey research is direct, uh, directly linked to the fundamental, um, this uh, fundamental assumption that people honestly report their belief and preferences. But if uh, some some people didn't know or did, didn't uh, or not, they, they know, but they not honest to answer the question in the survey. 
like uh, case in again in Hillary Clinton uh, case, uh, people didn't know and maybe didn't honest when uh, they asked by survey. In it's a fact of life, however, that we have the ability to misrepresent ourselves, and often there are reason to do so. For example, your your willingness to pay a new luxury watch will probably depend on who asking. People who ask you, people you survey you, is sometimes is uh, influence your answer to the question. If, uh, 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 for example, in, in, in this, uh, if people uh, uh, ask you about the lux luxury words, you might over overstate the amount to impress friends. Well, you will don't play. It's to negotiate a good deal with the salesman. So your answer about uh, uh, how about your opinion about the luxury words is dependent uh, who, uh, who asked to you. Is your friend or the salesman? Like that. And uh, the basic of the uh, behavioral marketing is come from behavioral economy. Yeah. The premise, the main premise of behavioral economy is that customer, consumer do not always seek the greatest marginal utility. And manager do not always strive to maximize profit. Yeah. It's uh, very important now because uh, in the past that uh, economic always said that the behavior of the people is always rational. They, the people always seek the greatest marginal utility of the thing. But now, uh, the economic is uh, have a different paradigm, different opinion uh, related to the behavioral economic. And behavioral economic is uh, between economic and uh, psych psychology. Yeah. And uh, for this uh, matter, I will. Uh, uh, said about the the work of the Daniel uh, Kahneman. Uh, he is on the Nobel Prize uh, on Economic, and we are uh, when uh, they are Im important because uh, the uh, Daniel Kahneman and uh, his friend is introduced behavioral thing behavioral science into the economic. And now the behavioral economic is uh, one of the important uh, thing in the uh, economic science. Yeah. The behavioral economic or the behavioral marketing is uh, try uh, to understand yeah, why people buy in marketing and uh, predict uh, what actually do by people, uh, not only uh, by the answer, but uh, by the ac action of the people, because action speak louder than uh, uh, saying. As uh, I said before, that sometimes uh, people is not uh, honest uh, with this uh, uh, answer of the thing. And the the main thing on the on the uh, behavioral economics by Daniel Kahneman 
is uh, this uh, thing that our brain is divided by two things. The first is called system one, is system that makes uh, intuition and instinct. Our decision through system one is always by in, intuition or instinct. And the other, we have a system two, our brain. That system is through when we make decision through rational thinking. In the past, is economics always uh, said that uh, human is a rational people. So they always make a decision by rational thinking. But as the stud study of a uh, behavioral economic, they said uh, they 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 uh, said uh, different thing that people that customer is more irrational than rational when they make a decision when they make what they do uh, they pay what your customer want is sometimes maybe is a uh, many thing of of them is uh, irrational. The system one said that the decision by people is usually is unconscious, fast, associative, and automatic pilot. When you buy uh, many things in in the uh, everyday life. You 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 pay thing is sometimes is unconscious. Why I uh, buy a black shirt? Why I play a uh, buy uh, this uh, bottle? Why I play this perfume? Sometimes is uh, irrational because system two uh, said that our system uh, our thinking system uh, uh, the the system two is a rational thinking system is only five percent compared with the irrational our system of thinking is uh, take a word slow logical lazy indecisive it's just in the system two when we have in the in the uh, dangerous situation, sometimes we are uh, thinking with the uh, rational thinking system uh, two. Uh, when we are, you are uh, drive your car and you are in the in the traffic jam, for example, yeah, and you do you you didn't know how to. Uh, 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 run from the traffic jam. Maybe you you make a calculation. You make cal calculation and then uh, how we can uh, quit in the uh, traffic jams. But when the the you drive in the normal route, you are always use the system one. It's just with your instinct, with your in. Uh, into intuition you didn't think many things when the the road is uh, normal when you drive your car in the normal way not in the dangerous situation not in the traffic jam not in the 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 uh, ordinary unordinary uh, situation ah uh, Daniel, this is um, the book of uh, Thinking Fast and Slow uh, by uh, Daniel uh, Kahneman, and I think is uh, important uh, for uh, for us in the behavioral marketing to study that. And the the new new book is uh, with the 
Daniel Kahneman is uh, the title is noise, but uh, we we uh, now is not uh, discuss about the the newest uh, book of Daniel Kahneman. But uh, this is uh, thinking uh, fast and slow is the uh, masterpiece by uh, Daniel Kahneman, and they are uh, become the the basic of the behavioral uh, economic or now is in the uh, behavior uh, marketing. In the in the thinking fast and slow, Daniel Kahneman said that the conscious conscious brain cannot handle enough information to get through the plethora of decision need to survive. We know life in the uh, in the time that uh, we have a very big data, yeah, very very big information, but we are uh, not used that uh, information all of them. That way, ninety nine percent or ninety five percent decision you make yeah, are handled by the sub subconscious brain. Unconscious brain is more important uh, to make uh, to influence influence us to make decision than the conscious brain. Yeah. This is uh, the system one and the system two, as I uh, said uh, before. That system one is uh, fast, unconscious, automatic everyday discussion and error prone but system two is slow conscious at what bloom at what blue and uh, complex decision and reliable this is uh, the differences between uh, system one and system two now uh, I want to uh, make a uh, like a uh, not not quiz, but uh, I have a uh, some uh, so uh, this is uh, people don't have time or energy to think logically for its decision instead they really on short cut of uh, to make the decision uh, more uh, quickly so uh, i have uh, three cases about this uh, behavioral uh, marketing uh, cases the one is uh, about the distinctiveness distinctiveness uh, I uh, will uh, show to you, uh, all the students, about this thing, and and the question is, which one do you remember? I will uh, show to you uh, uh, ten ten slides. Uh, uh, and uh, and the the ten slide is which one do you remember? Is uh, the the uh, easy thing I can uh, give uh, show to you that uh, why the behavioral uh, uh, marketing behavioral is uh, important because sometimes we are use the fast thinking not the slow thinking yeah. uh, which one do you remember yeah. okay that's what right. that's a 10 slide i will uh, uh, 
repeat again and now which one do you remember okay based on the reset research experiment by Hedwig von Restro from the University of Berlin in 1933, almost uh, 70, uh, 70 years ago, that uh, people said that they are just remember the, the number, not the words, not the uh, alphabet, just the number. The way people uh, recognize the number one five three, not the other uh, alphabet, because in this uh, slide, in the in the last slide, the number is different with the other. So in this case. Differences is important. Differences is important to the marketing. If you are market your product or your uh, service, no difference with the other. So your product and the other product will be in the trouble because consumer did, uh, didn't recognize, it, recognize what the difference between two products or two services. So the differences in marketing is very basic. That differences in marketing is very important. So like that. Differences in marketing is uh, can uh, uh, many things. Differences in color, differences in taglines, differences in logo, symbol, advertising styles, or celebrities or person person who uh, represent or advertising the product or or service. So, yeah, distinctive in marketing is important. Is based on the behavioral research. Is is based on the uh, psychology. It based on the unconscious mind. People only recognize the differences. They can uh, think uh, ra ra rationally. When they like the red red color, for example, so differences, uniqueness is very important uh, for the marketing. The other case, I uh, call it a pay standard effect. Is one of the study in the social psychology uh, related to uh, to how people uh, behave and the uh, study in social uh, psychology uh, like this uh, we can apply uh, this study in the marketing uh, area uh, study in social psychology like this is we can apply to the marketing uh, area to improve our marketing uh, understanding. What is a bystander effect? Uh, before that, I will uh, give you uh, the story of uh, Kitty Genovese. She is. Uh, Kitty Genovese is uh, a woman uh, who in uh, 
1964 uh, 64 uh, killed by someone in in front of uh, their house and in that case uh, during the uh, the killer uh, kill the kitty genovese uh, the witness of this uh, this thing uh, this uh, is a uh, 20 uh, 30 x people but uh, the 30 x people is didn't care enough you don't have a uh, uh, ability to uh, to go to do uh, a thing that uh, can uh, save the uh, kitty genovese this i have a video uh, with this uh, case uh, if you saw someone actually being murdered would you take action if you saw someone actually being murdered would you take action uh, the video from uh, the sound from this video is uh, you can hear Hello? Could you hear the video? I can hear it. Oh, you can hear it. Okay. If you saw someone actually being murdered, would you take action? Would you call the police or maybe try to get involved? These are the questions that the Kitty Genovese case has brought to the minds of anyone that hears about it. The story is a case of a roller coaster. It involves power relations, media sensationalism, and the actual establishment of the 911 system. It's most known for its connection to the bystander effect. Sometimes known as Genevieve syndrome, the bystander effect has forced psychologists to take a hard look at how and when people make decisions about getting involved with conflict. But before we dive into about the bystander effect, this video is going to be talking about the Kitty Genovese case. So first of all, what happened to Kitty Genovese? At three in the morning, on March 13, 1964, Kitty Genovese walked home to her apartment in Queens. On the way, she was approached by William Mosley, who had been following her home. Mosley ran after Kitty, eventually caught up to her, and then stabbed her multiple times. She screamed for help, and a neighbor yelled towards Mosley to leave Kitty alone. Mosley quickly fled the scene, and Kitty ran to her apartment building. However, Mosley came back after a few minutes. He found Kitty lying in front of a door to the back of the apartment building. He stabbed her multiple times, stole some money, and ran away again. In total, she was stabbed over a dozen times, and the entire attack took place over 30 minutes, during which time multiple calls to the police were made. At 4.15 in the morning, Kitty died as she was being taken to the hospital. And a few days after the murder, Genovese's death did not receive much attention. It took a week for the police to find the murderer. In fact, they actually originally named Kitty's girlfriend as a suspect. So why has this case lived on as one of the most famous murders in America? 60 years after it happened. Well, this brings us to the New York Times story. Word got around to the staff of the New York Times about Kitty's murder, but the actual murder wasn't what interested editor Abe Rosenthal. It was the witnesses to the murder. Police had interviewed 38 people in their investigations. Five of them gave testimony at the trial. Two weeks after Kitty's murder, the New York Times published an article titled 37 Who Saw Murder But Didn't Call Police. The article took the nation by a storm. Media outlets called it a failure, casting the city of New York into a dark light. People saw it as a failure of humankind, and many people called it a case of urban apathy. That same year, editor Abe Rosenthal published a book called 38 Witnesses. He called on us all to question how we act in the face of crime and how the urban environment may impact our decisions. These questions still haunt many psychologists and academics today, and in fact, entire courses have been created based on this case. The search for answers has shaped the way many people look at decision making and the way that they go about their life. But let's go back to a minute about the New York Times article. So the story's first paragraph reads, For more than half an hour, 38 respectable, law-abiding citizens in Queens watched a killer stalk and stab a woman in three separate attacks in Kew Gardens. Later on, it mentions, Not one person telephoned the police during the assault. One witness called after the woman was dead. Wait a second, you might be saying. Didn't you say people actually called the police? Yes. In the 50 or more years that have passed since New York Times published this article, much criticism has come out against it. 
New details about the case have been revealed that Kitty did not die alone, but in the arms of a friend, that multiple calls were made to the police before her death, and that some witness statements to the police were discarded because they already got the call. Certainly, 38 people did not see Kitty die. Of all 38 people interviewed by the police, many of them heard screams, looked out their window, saw nothing, and then went back to bed. The New York Times has gone back to review and correct information that was originally shared in the incorrect article. If you want to learn more about uncovering the facts of this case, I recommend that you watch The Witness. This documentary follows Kitty's brother, Bill Genovese, as he tracks down information on Kitty's life and her death. He talks to reporters involved in the case, witnesses who were shocked to learn that they were one of the 38 and other people involved. It was actually nominated for a News and Documentary Emmy Award in 2018. So the story put out by the New York Times wasn't entirely accurate, but the impact of the Kitty Genovese case and the story that soon came after it is true. Sociologists, psychologists, and journalists have spent the past 50 years researching the bystander effect and something else called the diffusion of responsibility, two phenomena in which people fail to act due to the amount of bystanders present. These phenomena seek to explain, I thought you were going to do something about it, or I didn't want to get involved. The case is also one of the reasons that the 911 system was put in place. Before Kitty's death, you could only call the operator and then ask to be connected to the local police station. Or you could call the station's number directly. Three years later, federal agencies put in a plan to create the 911 system as we know it is today. The first 911 call was made in 1968. Now there's a lot of stories within this one case. There's a story of a witness who did fail to call the police. There's a story of a falsely reported article that went on to be sensationalized in the media. And there's a story of how we as people react to the idea of the bystander effect and the diffusion of responsibility. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions about the bystander effect or the Kitty Genovese case, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you saw some... Yes, that's a very uh, famous uh, cases in the social uh, psych psychology that uh, is related to the bystander effect. And it's implement the behavioral case in psychology in this uh, area, in the marketing area. Maybe we can uh, choose yeah, this uh, a pra pra practical application of the uh, pay standard uh, case in the practical application of uh, grief load campaigns. Yeah. It's uh, better that uh, the advertising saying Blood stock are low across the Indonesian. Please help. Or they were adapted to say blood stock are low in Jakarta or in a, another place. Please help. Or uh, you can uh, give uh, your opinion based on the Kitty Kenovis case. Which one? If blood campaigns more effective in the uh, above or below yeah. above is just uh, the the volume of the uh, blood in the uh, red cross office yeah. but in the below don't wait until disaster strikes give blood and give now give forward you can discuss uh, that that uh, with the theory, with the case of the uh, base standard uh, effect. Yeah. Uh, why? Why people uh, uh, choose the, the uh, like the, 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 uh, the above uh, case, the above campaigns or the uh, below campaigns in the base standard effect as said before, but people didn't care about what happened to other people. They think that it's the, the other uh, problem. So uh, the solution is uh, uh, maybe the, uh, the, the other will be help Kitty. Uh, the other is said, uh, oh, and they, they, they hear uh, Kitty screaming in the in the night but they they know that uh, they hear uh, screams but they think the other is will 
uh, help Kitty, not me. So, it's uh, our typical behavior that the other will doing that, not me. The other will react, um, uh, have a reaction with the, uh, this event, not me. It's by standard effect. So, because the people is make uh, have uh, this, that kind of behavior, what uh, reaction as to the marketing, like the campaigns of the uh, people uh, campaigns, and the third case is 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 the the last case. Because uh, we have a uh, limit, limited times, is the loss of aversion. The loss of aversion is uh, behavioral economics refer to a phenomenon where a real or potential loss is perceived by the indi individual as psychological or emotionally more severe than an equivalent gains. Yeah. Gain are not the key of drift driving behavior. Loss are. People is more afraid to loss. Is uh, then uh, uh, to get something. Pain uh, from loss is my is is more difficult. Uh, for people to accept then uh, pleasure from game. For example, in the marketing uh, application, it's like this. Yeah. You will gain path of life quitting smoking or you make a campaign using this uh, message. You will lose Five year of life by smoking. You will gain five of life quitting smoking, or you will lose five year of life for its smoking. And for the behavioral economic or behavioral marketing perspective, it's better if you uh, use the greens uh, campaigns than the red campaigns because people is more afraid lost something than they are give something so it's more effective if you can uh, promote uh, about the uh, smoking of a cigarette will dismiss it you will lose five years of life by smoking so as uh, you know why why uh, the campaigns to uh, anti uh, uh, cigarette anti smoking campaigns is usually uh, use uh, the uh, pregnant uh, picture or uh, like that you will die you will have cancer you will uh, importance and etc because losing is uh, more important than gain. This is uh, my lecture. Uh, again, I just give the general uh, explanation about the behavioral uh, marketing. And thanks, uh, Dr. Ruby, that give you the give us uh, the special case of the behavioral of the uh, Filipino uh, in the customer behavior. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Echo. That was a very uh, eye-opening lecture that you have there. Um, so many points that I got from uh, the distinctiveness by standard effect in the loss of versions. Uh, I think all marketers should know about that. And um, thank you also to Dr. Ruby for 
uh, uh, snapshot of the Filipino consumers, um, buying behavior uh, during the pandemic and post-pandemic and, and forward. Okay, so um, now we will have a, um, uh, an interaction between our students at Majaya University and Niram College students interaction. So um, dear students, you will be assigned in breakout rooms for 15 minutes. Each breakout room should be able to discuss uh, similarities and differences between the Indonesians and Filipino markets buying behavior. Then after 15 minutes, all rooms will be closed. Each group will be given three minutes to present their comparative analysis at the main room. Okay, so we would like to request the first three um, groups to be headed by the, by the MC students. Uh, group one will be headed by UNIS. Group two will be headed by um, Gred Atienza. Group three would be by Nessa Amoroto. And then we'll um, assign also groups four and five. And we would like to request uh, students from Atmajaya to uh, do the presentation for groups four and five. Okay. Um, Ms. Lisel. If you have any questions for the two lecturers, we can still accommodate some later, right? Dr. Echo and, and Dr. Ruby. Yes, Ms. Ruben. Okay. Um, yeah, I, uh, Dr. Midget, I would like also to, uh, to ask our student to be uh, voluntarily uh, uh, lead the, the fourth and fifth uh, groups. Yes. Yeah. Who want to be the leader for uh, for these uh, two groups? Siapa yang mau? Um, we will. We uh, uh, some students will be assigned to that group, so they can uh, request somebody to, to lead that group. Okay. We already we already did uh, the breakout. Uh, the members of the breakout rooms. Okay. Alisel, we can open the breakout rooms now, please. Hi, ma'am. Copy pa. Thank you. And then we will play the institutional video in the main room. Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Echo, can we request a copy of your presentation? That was very lovely. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I, I uh, put in this uh, chat. Okay. You can um, you, know, you can please um, visit any of the rooms while the students are discussing. You can also join some of the rooms. There will be about um, five, I don't know, four, five groups. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, are we going to to post our video first, or yeah, yes. you can you can do it first? Yeah. Okay, we can do two first. Ms. Chriselle, when all the students are in the breakout rooms, please um, start the institutional video. Yes, okay. I will be jumping from one group to the other also. I think there are four, four groups only. I will look for that book, Dr. Echo. Yes. The Thinking Fast and Slow. The thinking Fast and Slow. <laughs> and, uh, very interesting. It's, it's very I interesting. Hope, I hope we have that in our bookstores. Uh, Mildred, uh, the Professor Daniel Kahneman is have a new book. The title is uh, Noise. It's more interesting. Mm, okay. So it's, uh, we can apply applicated the, the behavioral economics in marketing also because uh, as you know is actually uh, marketing and psychology is more yes. closer yeah economic okay. with psychology yes 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 but, uh, very uh, much yeah but uh, 
but the marketing psychology is not uh, popular enough. <laughs> psychology of marketing is not actually uh, when when I teach consumer behavior, a lot of it are are in uh, concerns with the with with psychology. I also teach consumer behavior in the yes. undergrad. Because of behavior is uh, many psychology. Um, excuse me. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, it's not working kasi yung microphone ko kaya na. So, nag-leave ako sa ano, breakout room. Paano po bumalik? Uh, click lang the, the breakout room. Join. Click the, the click the room and then join. Uh, Miss Lisa, can you please join yung group 4 so just so they they will have somebody to facilitate. But uh, mm-hmm. at, but an, an, another person from, from Atmajaya would, uh, another student with from Atmajaya will present it. Okay. Uh, Mom, I'll just uh, return here to the main room because I have a direct question uh, for Miss Lizelle. So I just wanted to ask if it's um, uh, AG or MC, but you've mentioned that um, um, Indonesia will be the one heading the group five. Yes. Presentation. Yeah. Wala pa okay. five. Lizelle, four lang ba? Um, I was assigned to group five. Five, five. five. May five. May five po. Yes. Okay. okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, as you were saying, Dr. Echo, sorry. Yes. Uh, it's an uh, interesting topic. And and we can make uh, research about the behavioral thing in it between two countries because I know that uh, the unconscious mind of Indonesian people and the Filipino may be similar, may be different. Uh, Let's do research on that, Dr. Echo. Yes. Because I will just finish my dissertation this year and then let's do another research on that. Okay. Yeah. About the unconscious, unconscious thing. Is, uh, yeah, how is uh, yes. unconscious? Yes. Thing? Because in marketing is many unconscious, unconscious things. Yes, yes. And I believe that all the fast decisions that we make, we it was so it's really something that we do not think of yes well, even the, no, no, even no. in the in 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 in, shop, in our shopping habits yes the Maybe. the spur of the moment then okay. when then when you think about it so i do not need this after all mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah why why people uh, in filipino is react negatively with the flexor for example, it's unconscious. Unconscious. Yeah. Maybe it's different with, in the, with. And I was also very interested in your in the first part of your of your yeah. of your lecture where you said that um, our survey is reliable because I'm a market researcher also. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. um, now, uh, people is uh, just big data is my. Uh, make us to more uh, easy to understand the people, but mm-hmm. with the the raw data, but the actually thinking of the customer is is still difficult to understand them. Yes, yes, yes. So, really, you as a customer yourself, yes, very fickle minded. What, you what want this, this today, the next time you don't like it anymore. anymore. Yes, like that. Uh, before before the pandemic, we are behave differently. And yes. now it's different again. Uh, so many, many startup in Indonesia is have a difficulty now. Yeah. Because people or businessmen just read the the uh, the phenomena, the data, not the how people thinking. <laughs> yes, yeah. that is why the Doctor Echo, my 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 dissertation is uh, a phenomenological. Oh, phenomenological. Oh, like this. on women entrepreneurs in times of COVID nineteen. Okay, why well, it's very interesting. Uh, well, that. Yes, because I think uh, getting really all the important. Um, important facts about their experiences can only be done yeah. uh, through a qualitative rather than a quantitative research. Okay. When, when the woman uh, become entrepreneur, mm. sometimes it's unconscious. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we, we, we didn't know. Uh, 
why they react with this not sometimes they do it by necessity uh-huh. when then then they they realize they're very good at it just because they needed additional uh, money to to support the family okay. yeah. but then they become successful and they realize they are uh, they have the 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 cap- capability to really run a business and be very successful okay like that Some, sometimes uh, our important decision is uh, sometimes we We didn't know uh, what the reason behind behind that. For example, in the women entrepreneurship, ten uh, years later, uh, you said your uh, responded, "Why you become entrepreneur?" Uh, I I don't know. Uh, it's unconscious. Some yes. <laughs> it's interesting because uh, people uh, didn't know what the reason why they have become entrepreneur. Why be, they have become a, uh, sometimes. Yes. Yes. Uh, because it's, it's. I'll find out. I'll find out. I will share you uh, with you my study later when I'm finished. <laughs> Thank you. It's a. Uh, are you coming to? Um, are you also coming with the group in August? Are you coming over also in August? Uh, I hope so. Um, because I would like to uh, to have that lecture yes. to to my business administration class as well. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yes. Because uh, in uh, my university, one of the the good uh, reputation is uh, in psychology. So mm. maybe we, we can explore more about the psychology, marketing, uh, yes. economics. Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's uh, interdisciplinary. Yes. In, interdisciplinary yes really it's really interdisciplinary so then i then i had um, a thought also that probably i can include some psychology uh, subjects in the curriculum to to yeah. really understand you know, for, for 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 the students to really under, understand marketing yes to understand marketing and the, the problem is some sometimes the psychology to psychology Mm-hmm. And the marketing to marketing. Yes, uh, it should be a. Uh, it should be should marry it and maybe get the get the. Uh, uh, Pa Eko, uh, or Ma'am Mildred, sorry, I cross your conversation, but I need to inform you that we are still live on YouTube. So this conversation is it. Okay to yeah. continue. No, okay. no problem. It's okay. okay. It's really, it's, it's still really related to to uh, the not... topic that we talked about. Yes. Probably we can we can start the the institutional video already, Chriselle. Before we share more with Dr. Echo. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Echo. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Bruce. Walang sound, Chriselle. The sounds. Chriselle, no sound. Wala pa din. Still no sound. Um, Dr. Eko, probably you can do yours first and then we'll just uh, yes. try to fix this. Yes, okay. Chriselle, uh, pull down mo muna. We'll just uh, do the Atmajaya. Yeah, Sancho, you are first to uh, the profi- uh, company profile of Atmajaya. Okay, one moment. Thank you. San- Sancho. No. Chriselle, paki-check na lang ulit.
Halo Santo. Halo Sancho. Yes, Pak Eko. Wait, wait. Well, that I already uh, put my presentation in the chat. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Thank you, Dr. Echo. Rizal, pake download, please. Universitas Katolik Indonesia Atma Jaya Universitas Katolik Indonesia Atma Jaya Memiliki tiga gedung kampus, Kampus 1 Semanggi, Kampus 2 Peluit, dan Kampus 3 BSD. Kampus 1 Semanggi adalah kampus pertama Universitas Katolik Indonesia Atma Jaya, terletak di pusat kota Jakarta. Universitas Katolik Indonesia Atma Jaya memiliki 8 fakultas yaitu Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Fakultas Ilmu Administrasi Bisnis dan Ilmu Komunikasi Fakultas Pendidikan dan Bahasa Fakultas Teknik Fakultas Hukum Fakultas Kedokteran dan Ilmu Kesehatan Fakultas Psikologi dan Fakultas Teknobiologi Kampus 2 Peluit Kampus 2 Peluit dibangun dengan fasilitas teknologi yang mutakhir didukung dengan rumah sakit bertaraf internasional
Kampus 3 BSD terletak di Pusat Digital Hub Indonesia dengan fasilitas yang lengkap untuk mahasiswa, laboratorium, gelanggang olahraga, asrama, dan fasilitas modern lainnya untuk mendukung aktivitas mahasiswa. Crystal, pwede na tayo. World Class Campus Inspiring Instructors International Standards Lasting Friendship Simply Great Memories All Around Those are just some of the things I remember about Miram College. I am a very proud alumna of this institution founded in 1926. Miram College was a perfect choice for me as a student back then because of their goal in forming women leaders in service. I am a proud graduate of Miriam College, College of Business, Entrepreneurship, and Accountancy. The entrepreneurship program prepares, hones, and helps the students in its realization towards his or her becoming an entrepreneur. One of the things that is distinct about the entrepreneurship program that I feel is different among other programs is the fact that it has a holistic approach. It looks at the talents, the skill sets, um, as well as the gifts of an individual, nourish it, prepares it, assists it, guides it, towards to becoming a successful business venture or a business enterprise in the future. I've been a certified public accountant for almost two years, and it was at Miriam College of Business where I found my footing, and they gave me the best foundation to create a long-lasting career. Here in the Sibeyas Department of Accountancy is where I was given working knowledge in financial, reporting, cost accounting, auditing, taxation, and so much more. Whether you seek to work in a public or private firm, Miriam will also prepare you for all the needed skills, especially for the CPA licensure examination. They also employ technology as a business tool, so as you won't get left behind in this fast-changing industry. Holistically, being a CPA is also rooted 
in becoming a responsible professional. So here at Miram College, they instilled in us the proper ethics and principles of transparency and accountability. As a business administration graduate of Miriam College, I went into the corporate world with the confidence that my education will help me land a good job and make a positive contribution to my company. In class, we were always trained to think like leaders, learning and understanding the different facets of business from HR, finance, marketing, and operations, Miriam gave us a holistic view of what lies ahead for us. And we were made to put into practice all those facets, from immersions in the different business centers inside the school, in addition to gaining actual experience as interns in various companies. Our professors were experts in their field. They put us up not only to the standards of the school, but to the standards of the industry as well. And this is the best training I could have received in college. When I look back, I always remember college to be the best years of my life. And Miriam College is the reason for that. Today, I'm a proud graduate of Leisure and Tourism Management. And I'm away to Miriam College where I am now and how to fill the end with my career. At the Department of Leisure and Tourism Management, I learned decision-making strategies for the tourism industry. From managing customer concerns, attending to details, safety and security procedures, and travel and tours. I also learned how to communicate effectively to tourism stakeholders, extend customer service according to guests or client needs. I take pride in demonstrating sustainable ecotourism concerns, applying Miriam College for values of truth, justice, peace, and integrity of creation. In LTM, we explore and experience the global wonders. Everything about Miriam is student-centered. We have exposures abroad and different programs as learning outcomes. Our students are trained to respond to new business horizons. If you're looking for a school to help you become a complete person, spiritually and academically, then Miriam College is where you need to be. I think this college, this school, Miriam College, can lead you and show you the way. Okay, thank you. Um, so we go right to the presentation of each of the uh, group. And can I call on group one? Eunice, is, it, is that your group? Yes, Miss Mildred. Good afternoon, everyone again. So for our group, um, we looked into the Filipinos uh, the Filipinos' consumer behavior and the Indonesian consumer behavior, and we also looked into the similarities of both. So when it comes to Filipinos, we are very driven, driven within emotions and beliefs when we buy a product. Um, and we are, we are mostly influenced by our friends, our colleagues, and practically thinking about the word sulit, um, which is uh, sulit means in Filipino that it's uh, you're getting... The, um, the value of your money. And in, in the Indonesian market, many consumers, especially during the pandemic, were very into online shopping, um, specifically with groceries and are still continuing until today. So when it comes to retail, they maximize the use of the internet, Grab, and other, logistic, um, other logistics apps as well. So the commonality between two markets is that they decide on the hierarchy of the needs on what we get to choose um, as necessities, such as food and clothes, compared to the non-necessities, such as beauty products um, or so other services. So that's it for our group, for the next group. Thank how you so much. The, how was the experience, um, Eunice, um, with, the other, with, the, with the students from Atmajaya? Actually, we learned a lot then from them also, Ms. Mildred, because uh, compared to us, I guess their internet is faster and more efficient. So they are they were able to maximize well. Uh, the, they were able to maximize the internet capacity, especially when it comes to logistics apps such as Grab and their other um, the other uh, the corresponding um, applications as well in their country. 
there are more similarities than differences. Yes. Okay, so let's go to the next group. Who is the group leader of the next group? Hi, Miss. Hi, Miss Mildred. Hi, Hi everyone. Red. Hi, Red. <laughs> All right. So, um, sharing my screen, I did this um, very, <laughs> very brief presentation. So, can you see my screen? Yes, Red. All right. So, we talked about the similarities between the Filipino um, and the Asian, Indonesian consumer. So, um, before we go to the behavior prof proper of, of the both consumers, um, we've established that um, the, the main factor that's um, the main factor that's or the basis of those behaviors would be both the Filipino and the Indonesian um, cons consumer are pretty much um, have the, the, the big like the social economic class of both countries would be the middle class. So um, that um, particular social economic class is the main contributor um, when it comes to the both countries' economic growth. So um, es establishing that, establishing the social economic class, which is the middle class, um, the behavior of both Filipino and Indonesian consumers would Will, will likely will most likely follow. So um, we've our group we've talked about how both um, consumers are smart spenders. Um, um, being in the middle class, um, being the population, most of the population being in the middle class, um, they are very much careful when it comes to when it comes to spending their money. So they're very um, budget conscious. They're very they're pretty much they're very careful when it comes to spending money, when it comes to um, uh, purchase decision making, when it comes to the products that they're going to buy, and so on and so forth. We've also talked about the um, the consumer goods and how everything is packaged in a sachet form. Um, with that, um, there's an idea that people from or the Filipino and Indonesian market uh, or uh, consumers are very much um, uh, looking into products that are more efficient, that are more handy, and so on and so forth. Uh, we also establish the uh, if majority buys, I will also buy mentality. So this is more of an influence buying. When in, um, for instance, you are in a group, you are um, you are going to buy perhaps food. Milk tea. So, um, if your friends are going to buy this particular milk tea flavor, you're going to be influenced by that because you are surrounded by by those people who are going to influence your purchase decision making. So, yep, we've established that. And then the <laughs> next point would be typically a person who buys a product. Huh? Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, oops, sorry about that. Um, yep, next point would be typically a person would choose a product in regards to discounts or package deals. So as I've mentioned earlier, um, the Filipino and Indonesian consumers are very much careful when it comes to spending their money. So they would, they're always in the hunt for discounts or um, package deals like buy one take one and um, maybe um, you're going to buy this product and then you will get this product for free so we've also established that and then next would be more awareness in regards with sustainability of course um, with the news with the recent news of um, when it comes to our climate when it comes to our environment um, people nowadays or Filipino and in Indonesian um, consumers nowadays are very um, meticulous when it comes to meticulous when it comes to buying um, products. So they would want uh, for it to be in a more sustainable um, aspect. So for example, um, they would consider the package, they would consider um, the use of plastics and straws and so on and so forth. And then lastly, 
health conscious. So now that we are um in at the very end, or maybe not the end, but um we are like the fine we are at the final phase of the COVID-19 situation or the pandemic. Um it is it is still evident that people are still conscious when it comes to health, when it comes to safety. So people are still buying face masks, people are still buy buying alcohols, people are, are still buying um, cleaning detergents. So, yep, um, we also talk about just a brief um, uh, um, discussion on this certain aspect because um, we were really fascinated with the discussion of, um, of Dr. Uh, echo or uh, I'm sorry if I'm, not, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yes, yes, echo? yes. All right, we uh, we were fascinated with how um, uh, the discussion when it got with uh, in regards to marketing plans, the creation of marketing plans and marketing campaigns. So um, we've talked about how um, we are we uh, before formulating marketing plans or marketing campaigns, we are very much aware of these important aspects or factors. So we, of course, segmentation is, is a big importance when it, a big um, important when it comes to creating marketing plans and marketing campaigns. We th we've talked about um, how the people from, or the, the Indonesian people, as Francesca has mentioned, um, they are very particular when it comes to territory, um, when, I'm sorry, when it comes to creating marketing plans, they are very um, dependent in territories. So they are looking into cultures, they're looking into religions for purchase decision making before they uh, create uh, or formulate marketing plans or campaigns. Um, they also consider market research. So um, after segmenting or after doing segmentation, they uh, they perform market research in order for them to create marketing plan or and or marketing campaigns. So, yep, we've just talked about it um, very, very briefly. So, yes, um, that's it for, was the, uh, from group two. <laughs> how was the experience, uh, Red? Very um, insightful, Miss. <laughs> very, very uh, insightful. The, uh, the Indonesian and the Philippines are so much uh, similar. So is there... It, it, uh, any one thing that is different from the Filipinos and the Indonesians? Um, we haven't really talked about the difference between the um, both consumers, uh, the Filipino and the Indonesian consumers. So as we more focus the, more on the the similarities. similarities. <laughs> yes, miss. Okay, thank you, Red. So now we go right. to the group three. Group three, who is the um, leader, Nessa? Hi everyone. Hello, Miss. Hi, Nessa. Um, Red, I will present as well. Yes. Okay. Can you see my screen, Bo? Yes, yes. Okay, so let me just sorry. Do it like this. Okay, so um <clears throat> hello everyone. We're from group three. And these are our agreed similarities and differences. So for the similarities, we both agreed about our uh, consumers being into big discounts and as well as the boom of e-commerce during lockdown and the um, massive lineup of people for the opening of establishments again after the lockdown. And there is a great impact of brand ambassadors in decision making. So for our differences, Indonesian markets are more hyped with the opening of places like having music festivals, while Philippine market top of the mind hype, uh, people are hyped with beauty products. And um, for the second one, we agreed that uh, religion does not affect the decision making in Indonesia, unlike in the Philippines where religion plays a part. That's all. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Um, very slight differences, but more similarities as well. How was the experience, Nessa, um, um, collaborating with your Indonesian new friends? 
Yes, Miss. It was really as well. I, I agree that it was insightful, and it's more of like since we are neighbor countries, we are not really far from cultures and beliefs. So it's like oh, they are saying we are like this in Indonesia, but we're like yeah, we're like that as well. So it's mm-hmm. more of challenging to find what's different between okay. the two countries. <laughs> yes. There are more similarities, yeah. ano? Yes, po. yes, we are really like uh, brothers and sisters. Eh? Yes, po. So we're so, we're so near each other, that is the reason why. Okay. Okay, yes. thank, thank you, you Nesta. Thank so, can we have the fourth group, please? I'm not sure who the leader is for the fourth group. Hi, ma'am. Um, I'll be presenting for group four. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll be sharing my uh, screen. Okay. It's is the presentation visible already? Yes. Okay. Um, with a short discussion with the AGU students and NC students, um, we found out that there there is more similarities than differences when it comes to consumer behavior in the Philippines and Indonesia. So to start off, um, both Indonesians and the Filipinos really avail of the buy one, get one programs. Then next is the sale discounts or holiday sales. So, oh, great. Um, with the, for these two items, we really um, get a veil of the sale, sales. Um, we are really fond of buying when, when there is sales, sale or discounted. Um, the next one is we are being influenced by the celebrity endorsements or influencers. And also during the pandemic, the e-commerce, um, we also avail that. Um, and usually we buy from online shopping with free delivery. The next one is colonial mentality. Um, it's more like um, buying of international brands than local brands. Then as, and lastly is um, we follow market trends or for example, for fashion and for the food, um, for the food was for for the differences, not much for Indonesia. More of their um, food uh, are are halal certified since most of their um, citizens are Muslim. Then their government is pushing for locally made products. Then even though that um, the brand or of the food um, is the same. Um, they produce different taste preference um, in different islands in Indonesia. As for the Philippines, we are more on brand conscious than brand loyalty. Then we um, we also have same brand, but then uh, we produce same taste preference, which is being produced and distributed in the country. Um, that's it for group four. Oh, okay, um, Isabel, thank you for that. So um, these are new insights also that uh, I that Indonesians pala are really pushing for locally made product. I hope the Philippines will also be pushing more, although we are we we the government has been encouraging um, consumers to buy Philippines, but more more push for our local um, manufacturers as well. Thank you, Isabel. How was the experience, Isabel? Um, actually, in the group, we, we were really quiet. <laughs> we, I think uh, we're shy talaga. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but uh, was it uh, a good experience for you also to um, collaborate with uh, with your uh, brothers and sister from Atmajaya? Yes, uh, that's, it's a good uh, experience. Okay, thank you, thank Isabel. You. Can I uh, ask for the for the last group, last but not the least? Yeah, please, Ria. <laughs> thank you, uh, Mister and Miss. Um, I will explain uh, our discussion. Okay. Uh, 
the similarity is during and after pandemic, uh, the socioeconomic class in Indonesia is also middle class and we also concern to healthy product and the smart buyer. We like fast and practice of service such as buy online and we more interest in the low price. Uh, we also have preference of the brand. We also have the brand loyalty. Yeah. And But I think the promotion of the low price can attract us. Although we have the preference of brands. And relate with the decision uh, decision making to buy um, in Philippines, the religion and beauty product influence are important for Philippines consumer. In Indonesia, the influence uh, of important person is meaningful for us, I think. Example, the public figure, maybe actor, actress, or activist uh, can attract us to buy, I think. Mm, the presence of the public figure can attract the consumer to buy. Maybe the other uh, want to add my opinion. How was experience, Natalia? How was the experience? Uh, my was experience of, of, of uh, collaborating with the, with the Filipino we, uh, from Miriam College? Uh, in in the breakout room? Mm, yes, in the yeah, breakout room. We, can, uh, we communicated uh, our experience in Indonesia and in the Philippines. Uh, 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 what the brands uh, are popular and I know uh, I just know that in Philippines the Lazada is more popular in Indonesia in Indonesia uh, Tokopedia and Shopee uh, are more popular than Lazada <laughs> and uh, the beauty product is very important in Philippines in Indonesia <laughs> In Indonesia, I think the beauty products here uh, are not is not uh, really important for us. I think. <laughs> uh, okay, so thank you very much, Natalia. So we are both smart shoppers and um, really look for discounts and and <laughs> yes. sales with with Shopee and other online um, shops available to us and. Uh, just by our fingertips, diba? We, uh, we are already used to uh, doing our shopping online from groceries to our clothes and, and footwear. So um, I think that is also one of the challenges of, of, of a lot of, of manufacturers now that they have to be present not only in the, in the brick and mortar stores, but also online. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions for any of our lecturers that we need to address? Um, do you have any questions? Students? I hope this was a very fruitful and a good experience for both our schools from um, students from Atmajaya Catholic University and Miriam College. So, uh, wait, I'll just check the... Okay, if there are no other questions, can we move on to the next one? Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, so, so now we'll um, call on Dr. Agung Negroho, who is the head of uh, Department of MBA program. And um, he is the former vice rector for academic affairs and dean of the School of Business Administration at, at Majaya Catholic University of Indonesia. He is a senior lecturer majoring at marketing, both in undergraduate and the graduate program. He took his bachelor's degree in public administration and master of management degree from Gajah Mada University, Indonesia. His doctoral degree in business administration was received from the University of Rostock in Germany. Um, dear students and, and uh, co-faculty, please welcome 
uh, Dr. Agum. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mijet. <clears throat> Dr. Ruby Alminar Mutia, Academic Deans of Medium College, and Dr. Mildred Sevilla, Coordinator of MBA program, uh, Dr. Eko Widodo, uh, Dean of Business Administration and Communication Sciences at Matraya Catholic University of Indonesia, and all of the faculty members and staff of Medium College and at Matraya Catholic University of Indonesia, and especially of all, all of the my lovely students here in uh, this uh, class. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to Miriam College and Atma Jaya for arranging this uh, joint class between, between uh, the business administration students uh, at both university. Nowadays, uh, an international learning program has become popular in the learning curriculum and it is called COIL, stand for Collaborative Online International Learning. COIL refers to virtual mobility experiences that are embedded into formal curriculum and allow students to interact with peers at international universities and professionals to develop intercultural competencies and digital skills while working together on subject-specific learning tasks or activities. I appreciate this initiative, initiation very much and hope that we collaborate further soon. Regarding the behavioral marketing topic in the sessions, I found that this is a, a brilliant way to start the collaboration between Indonesians and Filipino students by understanding the behavior of the consumers in both countries. It is also very applicable for the student of business administration, both in master's and undergraduate programs. Dr. Ruby, uh, please allow me in this lovely moment to officially request you to visit Miriam College with our students in coming August. We want to learn about business practices in the Philippines directly. And yeah, with this visit, we, we can build, we build strong bonding among us. And I believe that uh, I believe in the quote that small steps taken in the right direction can produce great results. Therefore, I would be grateful if we could continue our collaboration further. Thank you very much and have a lovely weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Agu. Thank you. So can I just respond, Ms. Mildred? Yes, yes, please. Absolutely. Much appreciated. Yes, please. So although this is not part of the program, but I just would like to respond to extend how grateful we are from Miriam College that Atma Jaya quickly accepted our proposal for this collaborative online international learning plan. And we hope that this will be the start of transitioning to the next other projects that we will have. So regarding your visit to Manila, Dr. Agung, actually the departments of business administration and the leisure manage, uh, tourism management and the uh, entrep department are already working on the plans on uh, as part of your itinerary on your August visit. So we hope that you will be pushing through your visit to Manila. And then the next step will be, we will be visiting you again in Atmajaya for another collaborative program 
physically present yes. in your institution. So thank you so much. And with this You're very welcome. quick preparation, we believe that we are successful on our coil. And before I end, I would like also to thank, of course, the participants, the students, the graduate program students, the undergraduate program students of Atma Jaya, Miriam College, the faculty members, and of course, the administrators of both institutions. So thank you and God bless us all. Ms. Yeah. Mills Red, back to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, B. Um, thank you. Thank you. The thank next. Yay, yay. <laughs> we'll do more of this. The next call will be in Indonesia. <laughs> uh, uh, in the Philippines first in August and then Indonesia. Let's have a group photo again. <laughs> All smiles, please. Okay. Show us your smiles. Lisel, please just tell us when. Wow. Who's that baby boy? <laughs> <laughs> I have two panels here, po. Okay. okay. Open your cameras, po, and smile. First panel, po. One, two, three. Okay. Last one. Smile. One, two, three. All right. Then, na po. Thank you. Thank you. Eunice, um, Chriselle, can you please read out the uh, no? Uh, we would like to request everyone to please um answer the the evaluation form that we have uh, posted in the chat box, so we will give you your certificate. Okay, <laughs> okay, um, okay, uh, Eunice. Yes, thank you, Ms. Mildred. Thank you, Advocate Sal, for taking our picture. So we would like to present the certificates of participation from Miriam College, Crescent City, Philippines, School of Business, Entrepreneurship, and Accountancy, and Atma Jaya Catholic University of Indonesia, Masters of Business Administration. We would like to present the certificate of participation to all the participants for attending the collaborative online international learning given this fourth day of June 2022 via the virtual platform Zoom. Signed for by Dr. Eko Widowo, the Dean and Faculty of Business, Business Administration and Communication Studies, by Dr. Agong Nughoro, Master, the Head of Masters of Business Administration Study Program, signed for from Miriam College by Ms. Mildred Sevilla, the Chairperson of the Department of Business Administration and the Coordinator of the Graduate Program of the School of Business, Entrepreneurship, and Accountancy. Signed for also from Miriam College by Dr. Ruby Alminar Mutia, the Academic Dean for the School of Business, Entrepreneurship, and Accountancy. Again, we would like to thank you everyone for participating for your time, and may we cherish our learnings that we can further apply in our respective industries. Thank you, and good afternoon. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Thank you. Agung, you just tell us your final uh, date of arrival so that we can <laughs> plan for everything. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We will send out the certificate once we get your... Uh